welcome back to The Independent Pianist. I am your host, Cole Anderson. I have some more music coming up in the next few days on this channel and also next Friday, but today I really wanted to talk about another topic which I think is really important for any practicing musician, which is, of course, ear training. I should make clear at the outset that this video is mainly intended for people who do not possess perfect pitch, although even those with perfect pitch might benefit from some of the techniques that I outline here. You will see a lot of courses online claiming that they can train you to have perfect pitch, and that may actually be possible, although it would seem that trained perfect pitch doesn't usually seem to match in quality or speed the variety which is developed or retained or inborn or whatever, as the case may be, at an extremely early age. Personally, I think that there are actually better ways to train your ear, which are much more musical in nature, making use of the principle of relative pitch. So how notes relate to each other, particularly within a tonal context. So in this video, I'm first going to outline more of a beginner approach that I would usually use to guide people to play by ear, and then follow up with more advanced ideas for how to improve your ear. So if you want to jump straight to the explanations, I do have timestamps for that in the description box. You would assume, of course, that any musical training should improve the way that you perceive musical pitch, but the polarization of musical practice nowadays has led to this not exactly being the case, especially for musicians who learn on a classical track. Playing by ear and other training for the ear is oftentimes neglected in favor of reading. I think this is particularly the case in the US, which has a fairly poor uh, system for teaching music at a young age. Uh, when I went to college, I was amazed at how behind many people were in the area of ear training, and also in general theoretical knowledge, things that are very important really for a complete musical culture, and which are generally taken care of at a very young age in other countries. And by saying all this, I don't want to minimize the importance of learning to read music either. It's an invaluable skill and a very difficult one to develop and cultivate. It's really very much akin to language. Speaking and understanding a language is a very natural, instinctive thing for human beings, but as soon as reading and writing are brought into the picture, things become far more arduous and difficult. But the benefits are enormous. You get access to so much music in a very unique way through reading, and you also have the option of being able to very easily write your ideas down in a clear way. Having said that, I do think in the classical world nowadays there is too much emphasis placed on playing by rote. We see that particularly in the breakdown of improvisation. What used to be stock and trade for every musician now is confined to a select few. Uh, in the classical world, I can think of figures like the composer Frederick Jevsky, who, whose music always included room for improvisation, almost always. Or there is the fabulous Gabriela Montero, who includes improvisations on her concerts. I saw her live do some of her improvisations. They're amazing. She also uploads improvisations to her YouTube channel, which definitely should not be missed. And of course, the best organists also keep the tradition alive as well. I heard the incredible French organist Olivier Latry improvise marvelously in a concert he gave at Oberlin. And I think we need more of this kind of stuff. I, I always encourage students to figure out some tunes by ear and to improvise their own accompaniments to these tunes. It's a simple way to do a little bit of what these great improvisers are doing out there as well. However, I'm sure many of you are already saying, I can't do that though. It's impossible for me even to figure out a melody to play on the piano without music. And it might feel like this is just an inborn talent that some people can do it and some people can't. But that's actually not the case. Especially for tonal music, there's an excellent approach that you can take to improve your ability to instantly be able to perceive and reproduce a melody. And that is to use tonality to your advantage. Now, our brains are really hardwired to understand tonality. Tonality, after all, is derived from the natural overtone series, so our brains are uniquely adapted to it. And if we use that to our advantage, it can really simplify things. So here's how you would do that. First off, learn to play and sing this little pattern. And ideally, of course, you would be able to do this on any major scale. When I learned this, I actually learned to sing it as well with numbers for each scale degree. So for example, I would sing one, two, one, seven, one, two, one, three, two, one, 
Four, three, two, one, five, one, five, one, six, seven, one, seven, one. So forgive me for singing, it's not my strong suit, but I think it's useful for every musician to sing, even if it's only for yourself. It's simply the most immediate and natural form of musical communication. Then there is also this pattern for a minor key. So for example, in a melodic minor key, it would go like this. So if you practice these two patterns every day, singing them with numbers, you'll start to be able to feel where any note in a melody is in relation to the tonic. You'll start to feel the natural pull of scale degrees two through four down towards one, and the way five gravitates immediately towards tonic. And then again, how six and seven also want to move upwards towards one. So if you hear a popular melody, uh, just picking one at random that I heard recently, uh, Dancing Queen by ABBA. It's a fairly well-known one, I think. So the opening goes something like this. So if you have practiced the major key pattern I just outlined, when you hum this tune to yourself, you will be able to immediately recognize scale degree three for the first note. Na, na, da, dum, three, two, one. I actually recommend taking a pop song like this and singing it through with numbers to yourself until you feel totally comfortable. So for this little segment, it would be something like three, two, four, three, two, one, two, three, something like that. Then you can check your work on the piano just to make sure that you got it right, but try to sing through first so that you really develop your inner ear without having the piano as a crutch. So I'll spare you my singing for the rest of the video and let you figure it out on your own, but you get the idea. So in this way, pretty much any folk or pop melody is going to become child's play for you to figure out. You don't need a perfect pitch. All you need is a sensitive awareness of tonal gravity, the way that the notes pull towards the tonic. There are only a few notes in the chromatic scale that are left out of these two patterns, but you can easily expand to include those notes by using this exact same pattern on some of the church modes. So for example, uh, I think the Phrygian mode and the Lydian mode actually cover all the remaining notes that are not there in the major and melodic minor scales. So you've figured out your melody, you're able to find a melody easily at the piano, but then you need to figure out the chords to go along with it. And this can seem much more intimidating. But keep in mind, in most popular or folk songs, which are of course the best grist for learning to play by ear, the vocabulary of chords tends to be pretty limited. It tends to be limited to the common chords for each key, the chords that can be derived from the scale itself along with various secondary dominants. So if you are aware of what all these chords are in each key, it isn't going to be so hard to figure out with trial and error what you are hearing. And of course, as you practice playing more things by ear, you'll be able to find these chords more and more quickly. So for example, if all you have to choose from are these main chords in the key of A major, you probably could work out in a very short amount of time that the opening phrase from Dancing Queen uses the one, four and five chords, just like this. So you can at least figure things out in general shape. You might have a little difficulty though getting some of the subtleties, hearing exactly what's going on in the bass line, exactly what inversion the chords are in. That might be a little harder. So supposing that you want to refine your ear a little bit and go deeper into all of this, and you don't want to just rely on trial and error, supposing you want to really get Dancing Queen down to the last detail, or maybe you want to transcribe a more complex piece from a recording, an uh, elaborate piece of popular music or an arrangement that you particularly like, which isn't written down. Uh, how can you train your ear to be able to hear all the subtleties, especially when there's a lot of complex harmony to deal with? 
Or what if the melody is atonal? You know, how do you figure that out? And the answer to both those questions is related, so we'll just dive right in. It all boils down to the fact that being able to perceive harmonic sounds, so by harmonic sounds I mean two, three, four, or five notes played at the same time, being able to perceive harmonic sounds like that is one of the hardest things to do in music, especially with regards to the piano, which is very homogenous with its tone quality. There are a lot of excellent ear training programs out there for free or for payment which try to improve this ability. Uh, there's actually an excellent free website which covers basically everything called tonedear.com. Anyway, this site plays chords or intervals or whatever, which you then have to identify, the idea being that you will gradually improve your ear. And useful as this is, I think the notion of it is actually kind of backwards, because basically they're giving you a test. And without making any attempt though to increase your sensitivity or familiarity with the sounds they are testing you on, you really need to expand your sensitivity, your conscious awareness of sound first, before you try testing in this way. Since hearing and picking apart two or more sounds played at the same time is the hardest thing to do, start with that. I recommend starting with all the intervals. For example, play a minor second like this. So hold that minor second, replaying as often as you need, and try to separate the two tones in your mind. Bounce your focus back and forth from the lower note to the higher note. Really try to pick out the tone. Then go on and try a major second. Do the same thing with all the intervals. F shift your focus from one note to the other, back and forth, so you can clearly delineate the intervals and hear their unique qualities. Continue with all the other intervals, at least until you've gotten to a major ninth. And of course, all the intervals can be practiced in wider formations as well, like this. So I recommend doing this every day. Pick a random configuration for each interval, high, low, mid-range, whatever, and over time your sensitivity will increase in an extraordinary fashion. After a few weeks, go and try one of those ear tests, like the one on tonedear.com, and you'll be amazed at how easy it is for you to identify all the intervals, even when they're played together as chords. So now that you're good at hearing two notes at once, it's time to tackle three. Your best bet is to start with major and minor triads. So do exactly the same thing, but now you're using chords. Do all the inversions of a major triad, starting on random notes. Listen carefully, arpeggiating upwards and downwards in your mind, shifting your focus from one note to the next. Try to be somewhat aware of the unique intervallic shape of each chord as you do this as well. So, for example, a major triad in root position has a major third on the bottom, plus a minor third on top, with a perfect fifth between the outer notes. So it's good to be aware of that as you are working on the chords. And do the same with the minor chords. Diminished triads, augmented triads, sus4 and two chords, any other kind of three note chord that you can devise. Again, after several weeks, test yourself using toned ear. You'll be amazed by your progress. Next, move on to four note chords. Dominant sevenths, major sevenths, minor sevenths, half diminished sevenths, whatever you can devise until you can hear them all in every possible inversion. This takes some time, but of course you don't need to do them all every day, just Pick one or two to work on each day. You really only need five or ten minutes on this each day to see extraordinary results. Once you have mastered the basics, you can get as elaborate with the chords that you use as you want. You can do five note, six note, seven note chords, poly chords, whatever you can think of. All of it will instrumentally help your ability to perceive sound more sensitively, and you don't need to buy a course or go to a conservatory to study to learn this, you can do it all on your own, sitting at the piano. Then of course you can test your abilities further with 
pop songs, folk songs, and even more complicated things as you feel the urge. It's a wonderful way to vary your time at the instrument, and if you are focused on classical repertoire, it's only going to help you to feel freer and more knowledgeable at the instrument. So those are my recommendations for now on how to improve your ear at home for free. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you have any techniques that you have used or have seen used with success in improving your ear. And do please support the channel. An easy way to do that is just to hit the like button and the subscribe button. But you can also financially support the channel at www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist. Even a small monthly pledge of a couple of dollars would be enormously helpful to me in bringing you this content. Also, feel free to drop me a line if you're interested in studying piano with me. I do take students online, and I have some space in my studio at the moment, so feel free to do that as well. Cole at independentpianist.com is the email. But otherwise, just keep practicing, and I'll see you soon for some more great music.